Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to program the Hans Loon Loon check, or also known as the Mod 10 check, algorithm inside of Python. This is actually a prompt from a Java textbook, so if you are curious, it is this one. And I've been pretty much just programming these prompts that are Java based, but in Python, because why not? It's not challenging, but I'm bored now. <laughs> um, so basically, what it is, is you have a credit card number. They give you this one for example. It has to start with one of these digits, right? Makes sense. And it has to be between this length. Makes sense. And you go from right to left. Every second digit, you multiply it, or double it rather. You multiply it by two, so you double it, and if you happen to get a double digit number, you just split them up and add those values together. For example, boom, 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 right? 16, 1 and 6, 10, 1 and 0, 12, 1 and 2. Then, your second step is basically just grabbing all your single value digits, which basically if it's 10, 12, 16, you're actually grabbing the value that was added together, otherwise that would have been a pointless step. So, you add those together, you get 37 for this particular number. Then, the next step, you go through right to left again, but all the odd places. So basically the numbers that you you didn't use in your first step, you add those together, which obviously those are all going to be single digits because look at them. And then you add those two of them together, check if that value is divisible by 10, and if it is, it's valid, otherwise it is not valid. This particular prompt is saying, hey, use these particular headers for your functions, right? In Java they're called methods, but we're in Python today. So we're going to call them functions. So what we're going to do is program all of them except for this one and this one because I thought they were kind of lame. So like, I, don't, I don't know. You can try and do it on your own, but I, I didn't really care about them. So I'm not going to do them today. So let's jump right into it here. So what I did here was I... First, right off the bat, since the values have to, sorry, since the credit card numbers have to start with one of these values, I just decided to make it kind of easier on myself and just make a list called starting numbers, you know, and just enter them in there, but as a string. That's not in the brackets. Come on. So, 4, 5, I think it was 37, and then 6. Then later, since we're going to have to do all those single digits added together, I decided to just store them in a list to make my life easier as well. It's not like the only way to do it or anything, but that's how I decided to solve this program. So, I'm going to take in the credit card as a string for this program. So, enter a credit card for the... Lewin's check. And that creates a new line in case you didn't know. So one of the functions is is valid. I apparently can't type and talk at the same time. So card is invalid. Okay, now I can talk. Okay, so Basically, the first one that we're going to program is this one. Return true if the card number is valid. Pretty simplistic. So, go right here. We'll call it is valid. It's going to take in a credit card number. And the first thing I'm going to do is check if it starts with 4, 5, 37, or 6. Since I loaded it up into a list, this will be quite easy. So, if number at index 0, because that's what we start at in programming, is not in starting numbers, we will return false, because it is not accurate. So, the next thing I want to do, in the case that it does actually start with a 4, 5, 37, or 6, we have to check the length is between 13 and 16. So, and a way to do that is I can say, hey, is the length of the credit in our is the length of the credit card number greater than or equal to 13? And if it's 
less than or equal to 16, which basically puts you in a range of 13 and 16. So, is it greater than or equal to 13? And is it less than or equal to 16? And if it's not, we will have to return false again because that's not how credit cards work. So, if that is, if this is true, and this is also true, then we can actually do the loons check. So that's what our else statement is going to represent. So I'm going to create a sum variable, which is going to be a local variable because it's being created inside this else statement. It is nowhere else. So, so what I'm going to do is when we go back here, you'll see that we have some other functions to make. And the sum of the double even places when you go right to left and double the numbers, sum of odd places when you grab the rest ones that you had ignored originally and add those together. So the sum is going to be those two together because that's what step three is. So sum of sum of double even place. Which takes in the credit card number, obviously. And then sum of odd place, which also takes in the credit card number. It's going to be equal to that. And in the case that it is divisible by 10, we can use modulus for this. Hopefully you know what modulus is. You know it divides and keeps the remainder. So if the remainder is 0, it's evenly divided. And if it's not... It is, in fact, not a valid credit card number. So we got to make these now, right? So I'm just going to grab DEF, and we'll do the step one one first, because that just makes sense to do step one first. We don't, I'm not going to start in the middle of something. That's kind of weird. So we have to tell it to take in number, because we want it to take in number. So... For the sum of double even place, I'm going to create another variable. It's called sum. Again, I can do this because it was, was a local variable. This was defined inside its function. This is being defined inside a different function. So they have no, each, but no idea that each other exist. So they will not conflict one another. So I'm going to go right in and make a for loop, but it's going to iterate like down. It's going to, instead of incrementing up starting at zero, it's going to decrement down starting at the length minus one because that's the, going to be the last index all the time, no matter what you're doing. And remember, number is a string, so we can grab the length. So in order to grab every other value from right to left, I'm going to check if the specific index we're starting off at and going forward in is divisible by 2. If it is, in fact, divisible by 2, I'm going to grab the second to last digit and so forth going from right to left since we have a reversed for loop. Reversed, that is just a function in Python. I didn't make it. It already exists. You can call it whenever you want. It's pretty great. So val equals int because remember we start off with strings and now I want them to be integers because I'm going to have to add them together and stuff like that. So if the, well not if, if, well we did the if already so I'm moving on. Number at index i, since it's now an integer, I can multiply it times 2. Because you can't do that with a string. String is not numeric. So value, val, short for value, equals the integer version of number at index i, because there are originally going to be strings, because input by default takes in a string. So I have to cast the integer to it. Now I'm going to implement that second list I made called single digits because it's going to allocate all of the single digit values that I need to add together. So I can collect them all in one place and make my life pretty simple. You could have done it without a list. I'm doing it with a list. It is what it is. Programmer's preference, right? So single digits dot append, because that's how you add to a list. I'm going to cast int again and call this function get digit. Get digit does not exist. It is something that the prompt wants us to make. Get digit. So basically, remember in step one when it could possibly be two digits and you need to add them together. So that's what we're doing here. 
we're going to grab the digit, check if it's two digits. If it is, we got to split them up, add them together, otherwise return that single digit value that we already have. Not that complicated. So I'm going to come out of the for loop and write a comment. Add all digits together. Now I'm going to quickly just make the get digit function, which is going to take in a number as per the prompt. But we're also going to have to make this thing called get size, return the number of digits. We need to know the number of digits so we can actually return the sum of the digits or just the regular digit. We need to know if it actually is two of length or not. So get size of the digit return length of digit. Pretty simple. Very easy. Very, very, very easy. So this is just erroring because I didn't put anything in here. Once I type some stuff, it will go away, so don't worry about that. So, so far so good, right? This is underlined because we didn't really make anything. It doesn't return anything. It doesn't take anything. We're going to do that now. So, get digit. This is going to return the number if it's a single digit, and if not, return the sum of those two digits, right? Said that already. So I'm going to create a variable called number, and it's going to be set to the string version of number because we're passing in an integer. Be careful. So if number equals the string of number, if get size of number is equivalent to 2, since it's a string, we can do the length like that. If it was an integer, you would not be able to do things. So, number at index 0 is always going to be the first one. Number at index 1, well, the value is only ever going to be 1 or 2 length, so I can hard code it to 1. If you don't like that, you could also do the length minus 1. It doesn't really matter. In this particular situation, it does not matter at all. But I do need to convert them back into integers, which is simply done just like that. Now I'm going to close down here and do my else statement because I just want to return number. Oh, I forgot to cast int on y. I was like wondering why it was underlined like that. Anyway, um, we got to convert them to integers, which has been done. So what do we need to do next? Ah, we need to come back into our sum of double even place because we did not finish. So for i in range, not a reverse loop, we're just going to do our regular kind of normal loop in this situation. Because we're just going to iterate through and add them all together. There's no need to go backwards. So sum plus equals int at number, oops, number at index i. Then we're going to return the sum when we leave the for loop. That slash is not supposed to be there. So so far, so good. Now we've iterated from right to left, multiply them to grab the values, made sure we needed to add them if they're more than one digit, and then we're returning it all together so we can add it together and check if it's divisible by 10, which is basically the end of the uh, steps here. Just check divisible by 10. So the only thing we have to do now is actually make this function here. Not too bad. So sum of odd place. Obviously we take in that credit card number. So when we go into sum of odd place, I'm going to create that local variable again with sum. That's, I don't know, I just like that. So for i in range, and you guessed it, we got to go right to left. So we're going to be reversing it. So for i in reversed range of the length of our credit card number, we're going to check is i not divisible by 2? Why? Because we checked if it was divisible by 2 from going to right to left. We're trying to get the other values that we had skipped. Therefore, if it's not equal to 2, we're going to get the opposite positions that we originally got when we just did it regularly. And an exclamation point is how you say not. Pretty much in all programming languages. Oh, I have a semicolon here. That's wrong. All right, and that's not even indented, which is probably why, because the colon wasn't there. Makes sense. So if i mod 2 is not, in fact, equal to 0, 
we need to add to our total sum the integer value of number at index i. And then when we're done, we would just return the sum. So we're just basically adding all the numbers we had skipped originally in the first step and storing it in this variable and then returning the variable because we want to add them together because that's what like step three, step four was. Step five is to check if it's divisible. Step four was to add the two together from the previous two steps. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So if I go here, because I think, I think we're done. I think that was the whole thing. So if I run the program and I check, oh, which one did I grab? I grabbed the one that's supposed to say invalid. Card is invalid. Now if I grab the one that says it is valid, boom, done. And that is the Hans Loon algorithm programmed in Python. Now I did notice that I think this was useless to convert to an integer. Because we automatically converted it into a string, but whatever. Other than that, it's a pretty solid program here. Close them all up. And this is not that many lines of code. So, uh, questions, comments, concerns, video suggestions, I'll go below in the comments section, and I'll see you guys later.